Hi, folks. Um, so I was a little bit nervous about um, kind of the overlapping commitments on Thursday, March 9th. Um, so I'm pre-recording this video that introduces you to the Unknown Labs, just in case I get held up. Um, so um, what I want to show you is how we're going to get to our Unknown Lab information. So if you go to your D2L shell and go to labs, just where you find our labs pre-exam two, at the very bottom, you're gonna have this module called unknown labs one through three. Okay. If we click on that, then you're going to see a sub-module for unknown lab one. That's what we're gonna cover on March 9th. And then the next week after March 9th, we're going to go through unknown lab two and three. So don't worry about these two for March 9th. Our focus will be with this lab. In general, what we're going to be doing for all of these three modules is that we're going to, I'm going to assign you guys unknowns. There are three potential unknowns and all of the results files have results for those three unknowns. Um, and so once you have your number for your unknown, you'll just follow through with that specific number throughout all of the three labs, the three unknown labs, and you'll just focus on that organism. And at the end, <clears throat> the goal is to be able to use the different um, skills and procedures that we've learned throughout the term to then identify your organism. Um, and so the way that we're going to kind of follow through with that is that we'll have lab packets similar to the lab packets we've been using so far, where there's an introductory piece, a results piece, and kind of a discussion or elaboration on those results um, that will ask you to look at the results from your unknowns and follow through. At the end of each packet, you'll essentially be able to narrow the options for your unknown down more and more and more until with the third packet, you should be able to narrow it down to one organism. So for unknown lab one packet, we're gonna look at staining results. So simple stain, gram stain, endospore stain results. And then for unknown lab two, we're gonna look at media and assays. So a subset of media and assays. And for unknown lab three, we'll look at the rest of the media and assays that we have performed. So like our MSA, MAC, thioglycolate, uh, carbohydrate tests, catalase tests, gelatinase, gelatinase tests, so on and so forth. All of those are divided up between unknowns, unknown labs two and three. Now, as you're collecting your data and you're looking at, you know, the simple stain, the gram stain, the endospore stain, you're looking at the different assays, how are you going to know which organism you're potentially working with? Well, that's a good question. And so the other really important document, along with the lab packet and the results packet for these labs, is this possible unknown organisms expected results and characteristics document. And so this document, you're going to actually, even though it's only posted to the first module of the three unknown modules, you're going to use it throughout the whole set of three unknown labs. So I'm going to open that up. And so what you're looking at in this document is essentially all of the possible results for all of the possible organisms that we might be working with with our three unknowns, okay? And I'm gonna get back to these top pages in a minute, but I'm gonna actually skip to the bottom of the document first and then come back. And so you can see here, it's just a table that has the different organisms, some of which you have seen throughout the term, like Bacillus, for example, we've talked about a little bit because Bacillus subtilis and some of these other ones as well produce endospores. Right. And so we've encountered some of these organisms, E. coli we've encountered. So some of these organisms we've encountered, some of them maybe less experience and exposure to, but they're listed here at the top. And all of the potential results for all of the different um, procedures are all listed. So bacillus, we can read here that it is a bacillus or rod shaped organism that is gram positive that does produce endospores, that 
has positive results on a PEA test, right? Has negative, it's negative for growth on a MAC and therefore you can't tell whether it produces uh, or whether it ferments lactose or not, right? And so all of the different results are listed here. Now for some things it's really clear, like gram stain, if it says positive, then it's gram positive. Endospore stain, if it says positive, then it does produce endospores. But some of these are a little bit more complex. Like, how did I know that this negative NA means it doesn't grow on MAC and we can't tell whether it ferments lactose? Well, the answer to that is to go back to the top couple of pages. So we'll go back up here. And there are tables for keys for every single test. So simple stain. The table symbol B means it's a bacillus or rod-shaped organism. The table symbol C means it's a coccus or circular-shaped organism. Um, for gram stain, the positive sign means that it's a gram-positive organism. The negative sign means that it's a gram-negative organism. For the endospore stain, a positive symbol means that endospores are produced. The negative symbol means that endospores are absent. Um, for PEA, positive means that it's a gram-positive organism. Negative means it's negative for growth and it's a gram-negative organism. For some of these more complex ones, you can see what the differential and selective results are. So if it's a positive, positive, that means that yes, it did grow, and yes, it did ferment mannitol for the MSA, for the mannitol salt agar. Um, if it's um, if it's a MAC, then it did grow, and it did, did ferment lactose for the MAC plates. Um, if it didn't grow, then that's a negative result, and then we won't know whether it ferments lactose or not. And so you can read off all of the different potential results from each of the different tests off of these tables that are on the first three pages of this document. And then you can come here and see which, which organism might potentially be your organism based on your results. So for example, in unknown lab one, you're just doing the stains. So you're gonna look at the three potential organisms. One of those is assigned to you. So you're just gonna look at that one that has your number, okay? You're gonna read off its simple stain, whether it's a bacillus or coccus shaped organism. It's gram stain, whether it's a gram positive or gram negative, and it's endospore stain, whether it produces endospores or not. And so for example, if you have a bacillus shaped organism that's gram positive and does produce endospores, then you have multiple potential organisms based on this table. So it could be any of these bacillus organisms, it could be any of these organisms here, but it's not going to be a corn bacterium because it doesn't produce endospores. Uh, those corn bacterium don't produce endospores, and so that doesn't align with the results for your unknown, and therefore these are not possible potential organisms. Now, there are a couple of pages of organisms, so make sure you look through all of these. So these also, none of these align with those results, that it's bacillus, gram-positive, and endospore forming, because these are all cocci, even though they are gram-positives, and they don't produce endospores. So it could be none of these organisms as well. Then we can go to the last page, and we can say also it's none of these organisms. Even though these are bacillus-shaped organisms, they're gram negative and non endospore forming. And so when you go through your packet, you would just put these five potential organisms as the ones that you would move forward with as you are reading off your other results. And so you would only look at organisms that were bacillus, gram positive, and endospore forming. And then in labs, in unknown lab two, when we look at PEA, MAC, MSA, fluid thioglycolate, and catalase, then you would be able to narrow it down even more to fewer organisms. And then once we do our unknown lab three, we'll look at the nutrient agar, starch agar, the different phenol broths. And those results should narrow you down to one single organism. So you'll follow through the lab packet 
the lab packet will ask you about the different tests that we're using that day. We'll ask you for the results for your specific unknown. And then we'll ask you to elaborate on those results and what they mean for the potential organisms that you have. And so for March 9th, you'll just need to do the unknown lab one. The packet for that is here and it'll lead you through what is your unknown? What are the purposes of the different tests that we're using? And then it'll lead you through the results. And just as with our other labs for the results, you're gonna go into the results PowerPoint and you're gonna read off the results for your specific unknown. So if you're four, you're just gonna read off the simple stain the gram stain and the endospore stain for organism unknown number four. Okay, and the same for unknown number seven and unknown number eight. Okay, um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I may be able to respond to emails depending on the situation. So feel free to email me those. Um, the one remaining question is what is my unknown number? Okay, and so so for um, folks that have last names between the letters A and M, then you're going to choose unknown number four. For folks that have last names between the letters M and S, you're gonna choose unknown number seven. And folks that have last names between S and Z, you're gonna choose unknown number eight. And so in the case that I'm actually not present in class and you're watching this recording, you're actually just welcome to watch this recording and then work on your unknown on your own. Um, if there are still folks in the Zoom session and you guys want to work in your groups based on your unknown, you're also welcome to do that as well. And so just in review, folks that have the last names A through M, starting with the letters A through M, have unknown number four. Folks who have the last names with letters starting with M through S have num unknown number seven. And folks who have last names starting with the letters S through Z have unknown number eight. Okay. Um, so thank you for your patience with my me acknowledging that I've kind of overcommitted for this evening. I really appreciate your patience with that. Do feel free to email me if you have any questions. I will try to be aware of those emails um, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And, um, you know, enjoy because hopefully this unknown lab is, is tends to be really fun kind of using our knowledge that we've developed throughout the term to identify an unknown organism. So thank you for listening. Um, I look forward to reconnecting with you for unknown lab number two, and I'll see you then on Tuesday. Okay, bye folks.